good afternoon to you all welcome to the third session of marketing management class good afternoon ma'am good afternoon ma'am okay. in the previous session we uh, look looked into deep about the uh, two piece that is product and price today we will be looking into the other two piece that is promotion and place okay or promotion and distribution before going into the promotion process first we have to know what is communication so according to wh newman and c of summer they have defined communication as communication is an exchange of facts ideas opinions or emotions by two or more persons that is dissemination of information from the mind of one individual to another some something which the sender or the person who starts the communication process wants to convey the same process in the same sense it's received to the other end that is to the other person or the receiver that is what is a proper communication when i explain it in other terms just take an example of our online class so i am the sender or the source or the starter of the communication whatever i'm trying to communicate to you whatever lecture i'm giving to you that you should understand in the same sense what i have in my mind that is what is a proper communication so any communication process consists of eight essential components that is sender message channel receiver feedback environment context and noise so these are the eight essential components of communication process so this is the diagram so first it starts with the center then encoding message channel receiver and then decoding after the receiver receives the message he has to send the feedback to the center this is a proper communication process in the in between there will be hindrances in the name of noise or some disturbances so center is also known as a source that is the beginning part of the communication the who starts the communication process he prepares he prepares himself and sends the message so the message is a stimulus created for the receiver or audience in order to make the message available to the receiver a channel is used it is usually the way in which the message travels between the source and receiver so through some channel the sender of the uh, information or the message they'll be using some media of communication or a channel of communication through that channel they'll be communicating to the receiver so we we are using the google meet platform similarly if a person is speaking through a telephone they'll be using the telephone as a platform for communication so the receiver after getting the message from the sender he analyzes and interprets it properly and responds to it which is called the feedback so receiver as soon as he gets a message from the sender the receiver properly analyzes the message or the information and interprets it only when he understands the message properly he can respond to the message that is the response given by the receiver to the message that is what is known as the feedback a communication process is completed only when the receiver gives feedback to the sender without feedback there is of no use so only when the sender receives the feedback from the receiver then only the communication process will be complete so uh, we are all uh, daily receiving some information or uh, details about products or some services available of uh, or some products offered by other companies or some brands through newspapers tv radio hoardings on main roads mobile phone social media etc so through the uh, daily when we uh, read the newspaper we can see many advertisements of different products so when we on the tv we can see some ads when we are on the road we can see some banners of some advertisement so in uh, social media ads so in this way we are uh, daily receiving some information and details in this way the com uh, the company or the brand is trying to communicate about their products or services to its potential and existing customers 
So commonly in marketing, this communication between the company and its consumers or the customers, that is what is known as marketing communication, or we call that as promotion. So it is aimed to inform or remind or pursued the target customers so that they buy the company's product or services. So main purpose of this communication or marketing communication is to inform the customers about the products, to re remind us about their products availability or to convince and or persuade us so that we will go buy the product. So that is what is marketing communication or promotion. So a manufacturer or a company or a brand, they are the, they act as a source in this communication process. They are the sender who sends the message through some platforms. So, so a manufacturer or a company or a brand is the source while prospective or existing consumers are at the receiver of the communication. So message is the product information or details which are to be communicated to the target group in a creative and interesting way. The, the channel is uh, ch the channel is various media options such as newspaper, TV, radio, magazines, sortings, etc., which can be used to reach the target audience. So they'll be using different channels for reaching the target market or the ta target customers. So they'll be sending information related to their products or the brands available or they, they which they offer to persuade or convince the customers to buy their products. That's the, that's the main motive. So or to improve or increase the sales volume. So the success of marketing communication depends on the company's ab avail ability to convey the message effectively in a manner in which the customer should understand and interpret the intended message. That's what I said. When the receiver properly understands, when the receiver properly interprets the message, only then he can send the feedback, right? So similarly, the company, when they are conveying the message through th uh, through some platforms effectively only, the customers will be able to understand what they are communicating and they'll be interpreting properly. And after that, they'll be sending a response in the way of purchase or something like that. Or at least if they are con conveying to some other friends or family members related to the uh, product they heard of, that is also a good feedback. So a marketing communication is considered effective if it achieves its objectives, such as increased sales, improved brand recall, increased awareness, etc. So when a promotion or a marketing communication is considered effective means only when it achieves its objectives. So what are the main objectives? Increase sales to improve the sales volume, to improve the brand recall. That is, remember the brand, increase the awareness of the product, and so on. So this is equivalent to the feedback as discussed in the process of communication. So this is what we discussed as feedback in the communication process. So, so the, this communication between the brand and the company with its potential or existing customers is known as marketing communication or promotion. So it is defined as organization's unique set of communications that is a stimuli designed to influence. Influence means either to inform about the product, to persuade us or to remind about the pro products. So to influence selected target audience into desirable responses. This is what is promotion. So there are, so we know, right, four P's of marketing mix in that. So the third P is promotion. So it is one of the key element. It plays a significant role in the marketing process. So here we are again learning the elements of promotion mix, that is four things, that is advertising, sales promotion, personal selling, public relations. So marketing mix, we learn the four P's, that is product, price, place, promotion. So similarly, we are going to learn four elements of promotion mix, that is advertising, personal selling, sales promotion, and public relations. So the elements of promotion mix are employed by the firm for the purpose of creating awareness, for building their image, and for sales. So every one of us are coming across various promotional mix elements daily. So when we read a newspaper, that is what I said to you before. In the morning when we read a newspaper, we'll be seeing some 
ad in the newspaper or when we are watching some tv channel in between some favorite programs we can watch some ads when we are uh, watching some music videos on the youtube in between you can view some ads or when we visit a nearby shop for shopping or something like that to buy a product so we can see some boards some banners or some hoardings on the street wall paintings so these all are the elements of promotion mix so daily routine life when we are going through we are uh, seeing all the elements of promotion mix so first one advertising so you are all aware what is advertising every day when we are watching tv or whatever we are seeing this ads advertisements so it is defined as any paid form of non personal communication that seeks to inform customers and to persuade them regarding its product offerings and services that it offers that is it is a paid form of non personal communication so main purpose is to inform customers about their products to persuade them and convince them in such a way that rea they react to this ad by the way of purchasing the product so this is what is advertise so newspapers magazines internet radio these are all the some uh, some of the media vehicles through which they carry message for the customers next one is publicity and public relations so public relations mainly is any form of communication that fosters a favorable image for the retailer among its public so we have heard of public relations normally so for the public uh, public may include consumers investors channel members anyone so for creating some favorable or a positive image for the retailer among the public that is what is public relations it may be non personal or personal it can be paid or non paid it can be a sponsor controlled or non sponsor controlled whatever that that is what is public relations creating a favorable or a positive image among the public that is public relations so publicity is any non personal form of public relations so where messages are normally transmitted through mass media the time or space provided by the media is not paid for and there is no identified commercial sponsor so there will be no sponsor it is an non personal form of public relation here it need not be paid and it is non sponsor controlled that is what is publicity so it involves news releases press conferences media kits social media pages community relation programs some conducting some events and so on so these all are done mainly for the publicity of the product or the company so public relations is both personal and non personal paid and non paid sponsor controlled or non sponsor controlled ma mainly to create some favorable image for the retailer among the public but uh, this publicity is a form non personal form of public relation here the messages that are transmitted or normally not paid and not sponsor controlled so next one is personal selling you have uh, faced uh, they'll be coming straight to the home when we uh, go to a supermarket they'll be coming towards the sales person will be coming talking to us personal that is face to face interaction so it is a one to one communication for the purpose of explaining informing and demonstrating in order to make a successful transaction so they are main purpose is a successful transaction okay so for uh, they'll be coming to us uh, we'll be having some one to one communication they'll be explaining about their products they are they'll be demonstrating the product they'll be informing about the product so it, it is a face to face interaction or confrontation between the sales person and the buyer that is what is personal selling so next one sales promotion it is defined as an activity or material that acts as a direct inducement offering added value or incentives to customers for a limited period of time so it is one of the promotional activity normally uh, for uh, inducing the customers or through some incentives like coupons contracts discounts gifts and so on so so for uh, making and getting an Im immediate response from the customers they'll be initiating these type of activities sales promotional activities so these are the strengths and limitations of the elements of promotion mix 
so first one advertising second publicity and public relations third one personal selling fourth one sales promotion so the strengths when we compare you you can see that strength of the promotional mix and limitations also so next important one is integrated marketing communication we call that as imc so when the customer we know right the behavior of the customer is changing not it's uh, nowadays when you see the consumer of products they are not switching on to the same brand uh, they are not sticking on to the same brand they are switching right uh, so their behavior is changing time to time so with the changes in consumer behavior over time companies started looking for marketing communication in a broader perspective so the emergence of new technology and media options has made the marketers sh to shift their focus towards more comprehensive promotional approach so this well uh, coordinated and integrated communication effort used by the company to create a uniform image of its products or brands is known as integrated marketing communication so a comprehensive well coordinated and integrated communication effort normally used by the company to create a uniform Im image of the product or service provided by them that is what is known as integrated marketing communication so it brings together all the tools of mar marketing communication to direct consistent messages to the firm's consumers so it is one of the strategic integration of all the elements of promotion mix and other marketing activities so uh, it is uh, they follow a strategy in such a way that integrate all the elements of promotion mix together with some other marketing activities also like even marketing sponsorships below the line activities digital marketing so they'll be mixing all together they'll be integrating all together to send consistent messages to the uh, buyers of the company's products or services so this imc process carefully chooses executes and manages various elements to influence customers buying behavior so when they are choosing the uh, promotional mix or the marketing activities when they want to integrate it together they will be choosing it properly or carefully in with caution and they will be executing and they will be managing all the elements mainly to influence the buying behavior of the customers so it is also defined as a process that involves planning consumption integration and implementation of a variety of marketing communication activities to influence the behavior of the target group so the company normally uses the combination of tools like advertising digital marketing and below the line activity out, outdoor exit etc normally to communicate to their potential consumers in awareness creation about the brand and to persuade them to consider purchasing so they'll be using a combination of tools to communicate to the potential customers who who have the ability to buy their products and they create awareness about the brand and they persuade them to consider purchasing so these are the important uh, imc tools okay uh, so media advertising direct marketing digital marketing out of home in store or point of sales advertising sales promotion even marketing and sponsorship public relations and publicity these are the imc tools so examples are given so yeah, every imc tool has its own strategic and tactical importance in the whole marketing communication process and promotional efforts pertaining to the firm's product or service offerings when all these tools are used in the right combination and proportion then the impact of the communication will be made visible and its effectiveness also will be uh, becomes measurable so this is the integrated ma marketing communication planning process so first one contextual situation second one deciding on uh, target market third one uh, setting the communication objectives fourth one deciding the imc budget fifth one strategic considerations and implementations and seventh one evaluating the imc program so first one uh, contextual or situational analysis so normally to analyze the internal we call that as environmental scanning so we'll be analyzing the strength 
weakness, opportunity set, threats. We call that as SWOT analysis. So ba based on SWOT analysis, they'll be analyzing the external and internal environmental uh, uh, factors. So once they have properly analyzed, they'll be deciding on which target market they have to concentrate. That is the second one. First, they'll be analyzing the environment surrounding them. Then they'll be deciding on the target market. They'll be setting the uh, communi communication objectives. OK, so they have decided, OK, this target market we have to choose. Then, they, uh, then they'll be setting the objectives. That is what? That is the main objective of this promotion. Why they have to carry out this promotional activity? So they'll be understanding and they'll be setting the objectives of this communication or the marketing communication. After that, they'll be de deciding the IMC budget. So budget allocation is very, very important because which promotional tool they have concentrating, which marketing activity they ha they are concentrating, all this uh, charge some price, right? So they have to decide uh, the finance position of the company, how much they have, uh, how much budget they have, they have to decide in advance. Then based on that, they have to fix. Then strategic consideration and implement. They have to fix some strategy then they have to consider the strategy and they have to implement the strategy after implementing the strategy or the plan, communication plan then they have to implement that uh, program after implementing they have to evaluate the program whether it is a uh, fine success or not they have to, this is the imc planning process first uh, they have to analyze the environment, both internal and external factors. That is what is known as situational analysis. After that, they have to decide on the target market. Then they have to set the communication objectives. They have to decide the IMC budget. Then they have to uh, uh, formulate the strategy and implement the strategy. And they have to evaluate the IMC program. So the factors affecting an IMC strategy. So the main factors include the product or the service category target group characteristics, budgetary constraints, stage in product life cycle, regulatory considerations. So these are the various factors affecting the uh, IMC strategy. First one is product or service category. Selection of IMC tools mainly depend on the type of product or service category. So normally what type of product they have to concentrate or they have to promote that is the main thing so for uh, integrated marketing communication what type of products they are choosing whether it is industrial product or consumer product based on that the tools will be decided then so products or services which are technical or industrial in nature they require normally personal selling while uh, common uh, consumer products like uh, biscuits or uh, they need advertising and sales promotion then based on the target group of uh, customers their characteristics whether demographic characteristics or geographical characteristics based on that they'll be uh, uh, fixing which uh, communication or integrated uh, marketing communication they have to adapt so factors such as demographic and geographical characteristics of target market assume a very significant role in designing the IMC st strategy for a brand. When the target market for a product or service is rural customers, IMC tools such as wall painting, below the line marketing activities, etc., they are, they are more relevant due to low literacy level and exposure. So. Uh, we have to normally look into the characteristics of the target group or the target market based on that our IMC strategy should be. Next one, budgetary constraints. So the budget outlay and availability of funds. As I mentioned before, budget plays a main role. So based on the budget allotment, they have to fix the uh, IMC tools to be adapted or, or the strategy to be adapted. The budget outlay and availability of funds with the firm is another factor which determines selection of imc tools and strategy so media advertisement advertising requires huge budgets while public relations and publicity are considered to be free of cost 
so it also affects the reach and frequency of decisions multinational companies big big corporate group of companies they'll be having huge imc budgets so based on that they they can uh, uh, frame or formulate the strategy but small small firms or startup companies they'll be having only limited budgets and so they'll be choosing based on the budget which they have so they have to and they, they should be wise enough to choose the in integrated ma marketing communication tool or for their uh, promotional activities so next one stage of product life cycle plays a major role so last class we learned right product life cycle four stages introduction stage growth stage maturity stage and decline stage so uh, whenever we are concentrating on this um, uh, imc so we have to look into in which product life cycle stage our product is or our brand is that they have to look into consideration and based on that they have to choose the imc tools the so stage of the plc of a brand and its readiness and other allied factors of product or service offerings are essential and should be considered accordingly so uh, when a product is in the in introduction stage the company's objective is to make awareness or create some customer awareness about the products that is the main thing so in the in such a case media advertising and publicity is considered as suitable or relevant one then regulatory considerations so we'll be having some government norms right or regulations so that will automatically affect the choice of imc tools for example media advertising direct marketing out of form uh, activity these are all prohibited for pharma products or services in india so they normally do uh, use personal selling technique or uh, to promote the products or services then emergence of social media revolution on imc so social media has provided new tool and to reach out to potential customers by having an in-depth understanding of their habits, perceptions, and preferences based on that. So social media has, play, uh, has a major role to play. So marketing analytics, big data, IoT, Internet of Things, social customer relationship management, automation, chatbots, user experience marketing. So these are taken marketing to the next level. So social media plays a major role with reduced technology cost and increased internet penetration social media marketing offers many appropriate solutions for this so the new and evolving customers today they are bounded by online tools and technologies so this has made brands to include all social media platforms like email websites online public relations search engine marketing blogs social networks and social media advertising etc in the marketing toolbox so uh, content marketing online communities mobile marketing virtual reality they have also played a crucial role in the overall imc strategy so the evolution or the emergence of social media revolution has play, played a major role in the imc then in demand creation the role of imc the consumer response hierarchy models do offer meaningful insights into the consumer responses and buying process, which finally leads to the demand of the product or service. So normally there are uh, four key consumer responses hierarchy model, uh, which demonstrates the consumer behavior across three stages normally, cognitive, affective, and cognitive. So uh, based on these three uh, stages, the hierarchical model uh, has been framed first one is aida model second one is hierarchy of fx model third one e innovation adoption model the fourth one information processing model so there are four models so first one aida model so this constitutes the most basic consumer response hierarchy model so this AIDA stands for attention, interest, desire, and action. So the first model in cognitive stage, it is attention. Affective stage, it is interest, desire. Third one, cognitive stage, action. So 
so uh, this marketing communication effort first should grab the attention of the customer then after consuming or after creating an uh, seeking at attention from the part of the customer then they have to generate the interest after that they have to uh, create the desire for buying the product and somehow they have to motivate the consumer to buy, uh, sorry, the customer to take action that is what is purchase the product this is the first model first uh, grab the attention of the customer create some interest create uh, some desire on him uh, to buy the product and motivate him to purchase the product through us, the action this is what is the first model second one similarly in second model you have to create the awareness then by giving the knowledge regarding the product then uh, based on the information or the knowledge he has to have the liking towards the product and he has to prefer the product then he has to convict then he have to purchase the product similarly the other models also creating awareness interest evaluation trial basis adoption the last model present a, present the product create some attention comprehension then yielding retention behavior so in the three stages through three stages they have to uh, somehow convince the customer to buy the product then stakeholders of imc industry so the stakeholders or the ecosystem of imc industry is normally the manufacturer or the brand Second one is the target audience. Third one is advertising agency or media house and regulatory bodies. So these regulatory bodies include self-regulation bodies also. So the manufacturer or the company or the brand. Okay, then target audience, they are the potential or the existing customers. Then advertising agencies, media house and regulatory bodies. So again, next, we'll learn deep into the promotional mix. So I think you remember the elements of promotion mix, advertising, personal selling, public relations and publicity, and sales promotion. So we'll uh, go deep into the advertising. So advertising, we know already it's any form of paid, non-personal presentation and promotion of ideas goods or services by an identified sponsor so now some of the major marketing and communication functions performed by advertising today include to inform entertain persuade influence remind reassure and add value to the product or service advertised so there are different types of advertising the first one is industrial advertising the second one is consumer advertising third one is corporate advertising Fourth one is product advertising. Fifth one is primary demand advertising. Sixth one is selective brand advertising. Seventh one is direct advertising. And the last one, eighth one is indirect action advertising. Then, sorry, marketing, manufacturer advertising, cooperative advertising, and retail, retail advertising. The first one, industrial advertising, is normally for industrial products. That is mainly raw materials like machineries and machine tools. That is what is the first one, that is the industrial advertising. The second one, consumer advertising, that is advertising for consumer products. Advertising normally created for consumer products, that is consumer advertising. The third one is corporate advertising. So normally corporate advertising is performed mainly for improving the corporate image or the corporate company's image. For that purpose, they'll be creating some advertising and publishing. That is what is corporate advertising. Next one is product advertising. Under product advertising, the companies will be promoting their company's products. For that purpose, they'll be, that type of advertising is known as product advertising. Next one is primary demand uh, creating advertise, advertisements. So these advertisements are normally promoted for, uh, for promoting the consumption of some consumer products uh, like tea or carpets or so on. So primarily, primary products they'll be concentrating, they'll be promoting the consumption of such products. 
Next one is selective brand advertisements. So they'll be and the particular company will be offering different different brands. So they'll be selecting a particular brand brand. They'll be advertising for that particular brand only. That is what is selective brand advertising. The next one is direct advertising. So direct advertising uh, advertising means advertisements normally aimed at affecting immediate sale of the product advertised. So directly they'll be involving their main objective is to create some immediate sale of that particular product. Then indirect action advertising means like announcing the launch of a new product or building some uh, purchase intentions or creating some interest in the uh, customers or changing their attitude towards the product. We have seen many advertisements before the product is launched. They'll be announcing these are the features of the product. Uh, based on the advertisement, it will create some, it will stimulate us to purchase that product. So we'll be, uh, many of us will be waiting for the date of the launch to buy the product. That is what is the indirect action advertising. Then manufacturing advertising, normally manufacturer companies, they'll be sponsoring and paying for the advertisements. That is what is manufacturer advertising. Then cooper, uh, cooperative advertising means advertisements uh, whose cost will be shared by both manufacturer and the wholesaler or retailer. That is what is cooperative advertising. Retail advertising, retailers normally advertisers for promoting their particular shops. The, for that, so main purpose is to attract more customers towards their shops. That is what is retail advertising. Next one, role of advertising. Philip Kotler has referred to the following situations where advertising is likely to make greater contributions. So according to him, the situations are when buyer's awareness is minimal. So when the awareness of the buyer is minimal, advertisements is required. Then when the industry sale is rising rather than remaining stable or declining. So the sales in the industry it is rising, but a company's sales will be stable or declining. In that case, advertisement is preferred. Then when the product has features normally and not observable to the buyer. So product will be having more and more features, but it will not be observed by the buyer. In that case, advertisement is important. It plays a role. Then when are the opportunities of, for product differentiation are strong enough. In that case also, advertising is important. Then when primary instead of secondary motives can be taped. So important primary motives uh, sh can be taped in that conditions also the advertising plays a major role. So according to Richard H. Stanfield, he's, he has said in, in case of advertising, uh, this cannot be done. What are the things which cannot be done? That is a bad product cannot be sold twice. Or a product which is overpriced or otherwise non-competitive product cannot be sold. Then poorly distributed product cannot be sold. A seasonal product during non-season or out of season cannot be sold. Then products to uh, persons no, having no use for them or uh, we call that as obsolete products. That also cannot be sold. If you work overnight and we try to advertise, it's not possible. It doesn't work. Then do the selling job alone, only single one uh, without any group work. Uh, performing a selling job that also cannot be done. So these are the things given by Richard H. Stanfield that cannot be done. Next one is uh, advertising management. The basic decision areas normally in advertising is setting the objectives for advertising, determining the budget of advertising, developing and developing the advertisement copy and a message, and the selecting the scheduling media, measuring the advertising effectiveness. So these are the basic decision making areas in case of advertising. First, the objectives for the advertisement should be set. Second one, the uh, ad uh, advertising budget should be determined. Third one, the advertisement copy and the message. Advertisement message and copy should be developed. Fourth one, the media should be selected and scheduled next one the advertisement effectiveness should be measured so first one the advertising budget so this is what i explained before itself the budget plays a major role so uh, we have to consider the budget we have to allow uh, fix the decide on the budget first then we have to go on to the next process so money plays a major role so so money concerns on all the budgets for collective advertising. So this can apply to the media use, the geography of the advertising and the demographics the advertising normally targets. This also concerns how long the advertisements run and with what products they associate with. Normally, 
uh, when they are fixing the budget for the advertisement, they have based on the budget they have to fix which media. So through some pla media platform, the cost will be less, and some media platform it will be more. So based on that budget, uh, they, that has to be selected. Then geographical area of advertising, the demographic factors of the target market. That is the main thing. So these all should be uh, considered. Then next one, how much time or how much uh, uh, days the advertisement run? It is, is it for a short term or a long term? And with which products they are normally associated with? These are the things to be considered in case of uh, uh, choosing the advertisement budget. So depending on many of these factors, the advertisements could be more or less expensive and effective so uh, if uh, so the if these factors are not considered properly what will ha happen means it will affect the overall budget process of advertisement so next one is setting the objectives for advertisement so an uh, advertisement whether it is it can be either good or bad uh, in its ability to achieve its objective. So every company will be uh, giving some ad on some media through some media vehicles to uh, persuade the customers. So normally they'll be having some object objectives. So their main target is to achieve the objectives. So advertisements can be either good or bad in its ability. So some advertisements will be uh, in a positive way it will be causing a good impact it will be successful some may go for a failure it will be bad it will be having a negative impact also so though advertisement is largely informative and persuasive in nature it, to do a good job the objective of each advertising campaign needs to be clearly spelled out in measurable terms this is the main thing so whenever we are concentrating on the advertisements uh, so it is normally for persuading the customers so it, it should be largely informative so for doing a good job so each objective should be properly spelled out so in order to focus clearly on the target audience or on the time period over which these are to be achieved so the objectives of the uh, when the objectives of the advertisement is properly set then it will be the ad advertisement will be very effective and it will be persuading the customers as well so the main objectives of advertising are first to inform and build awareness second one to create the brand knowledge third one to reinforce positive attitudes about the brand fourth one precipitate sorry precipitate buying action next one to increase the sales and the other one is build up an image so these are the main objectives first the uh, the product should be prop and the information related to the product should be informed properly and awareness should be created then uh, a knowledge about the brand should be created then positive attitudes and or attributes or the features of the uh, product should be reinforced into the mind of the customers then uh, they have to induce the buying action also thus they have to increase the sales of the product they have to uh, build up an image next one developing advertising copy and message so normally this advertisement copy it's a communicative portion of an advertisement so there should be a headline illustration body copy and a signature line so, uh, so identifying the sponsor of the advertisement so this is what is a, a main advertisement copy so mainly this advertisement copy through advertisement copy only the proper uh, the main content of the advertisement is being communicated to the, to the audience so Another component that plays a vital role in the development of the advertisement copy and formulation of a message is the role of the headline and illustration. So headline should be uh, in such a way it should be developed. It should uh, convince and persuade or it should uh, create a stimuli to buy the product that in such a way the headline and illustration of the advertisement copy should be. So it should be effect, effective must establish a clear link with various stages of the buyer adoption process. It should arrest the attention of the audience. It should inspire the interest. It should create desire. And uh, it should precipitate the action among the target customers. So it should use 
judicious mix of the aspects like advertisement layout, headline, illustration, and motivating appeal. So this all should combine together for giving an effective advertisement. So selecting the media plays a vital role. So if every products cannot be uh, advertised in whatever media we want. So base the media selection plays a major role. So uh, decisions related to media uh, planning. So which media should be used? when it should be used how often should the advertisement should be placed in the selected media these all plays a major role so main purpose of this media planning is to optimize the communication reach the relevant audience within the value available budget so within the uh, budget available uh, so it should uh, somehow induce and it should create a positive feedback through the communication and it, the communication should properly reach the targeted or the relevant or the potential audience or the customers so based so it should be planned in such the media should be planned in such a way that which media should be used and when and how often it should be advertisement should be used for making efficient and effective media decisions it is necessary that a beginning be made by collecting appropriate data from internal and external sources so for that they have to collect data from the internal sources and external sources the data collected from internal sources include the objectives of advertising the advertisement copy strategy the features or attributes of the product the budget available by the company these everything or the internal source so external source includes uh, related to the media or the reach credibility suitability or to company's product media availability the cost of the media and the competitors media mix so these are the external sources to be considered for effective and efficient media related decisions for taking after the suitable and available media are shortlist then they have to subject to the evaluation criteria so whether the uh, media through the media scheduling or the media plan will properly the advertisement through this media which we selected will properly reach the frequency of advertisement the gross rating point the comparative cost these all should be uh, discussed so once the media mix for the firm has been selected the next task relates to scheduling of media over a period of time so first the media has been selected then we have to schedule so the main goal of media scheduling besides attaining longer time visibility and timely reminders for reinforcing of the message lies in the compatibility of the advertisement so main purpose of this um, through media we are advertising is mainly for timely delivery so whenever we see some advertisements we itself uh, know right uh, what uh, if you are frequently viewing an advertisement that particular uh, product will be remaining in our mind so when we when we doesn't have any contact with the such an advertisement for a long time we automatically will forget about that pro product maybe so to reinforce the message normally li lies in the combat compatibility of the advertisement so seasonal peaks product launch relaunch promotional it's all needs of the firm this all are the main goals of media scheduling so based on this considerations the factors media scheduling is normally done by the company then the advertising effectiveness is measured so media is selected scheduled then effectiveness of the advertisement should be measured so adver advertising communications have a time lag between the buyers awareness and the action so uh, when, when uh, the communication so one once the buyer get awareness related to the particular product or service then for taking action there will be a time lag so the communication through advertisements ha have a little time lag between this awareness creation and the action taken by the buyer if the lag happens for a longer time or the competitor ha happens to be more aggressive the decay or for, uh, forgetting effect of the advertisement may set in soon so uh, when the time lag between the buyer's awareness and the action is much longer and when the competitor of the company or the product is very uh, more aggressive and decay so normally or the forgetting of uh, effect of the advertisement uh, what will happen will set 
soon okay it is thus very difficult to define the appropriate advertising levels and which advertisement should produce how much effect that is very difficult to properly measure so measuring an advertisement it's not uh, effectiveness of an advertisement is not an easy one so it's a little bit uh, difficult task the next one is the sales promotional activities so i have I told you the incentives provided for the customers for, to promote the sales that is what is sales promotion so it is a short term incentive to encourage the purchase or sale of a product or service according to the definition given by roger strang so the main objectives of the sales promotion is increasing the short term sales volume maintaining the loyalty for customers loyalty emphasizing the novelty complementing other promotional tools also these are the main objectives of sales promotion so there are different sales promotion methods used so uh, three kinds are one is consumer sales promotion second one is dealer sales promotion third one is sales force promotion so first one consumer sales promotion is normally done to uh, increase the use of products by the consumers mainly for attracting new new customers to the uh, towards the product or service provided by the company so mainly uh, the promotion sales promotional schemes used to for um, um, for the consumer level or the, for the consumers is mainly first one sampling that is free samples will be given to the consumers to increase their interest in the product so whenever we go buy a product uh, free samples or sachets will be provided along with the product which we buy uh, which act as a promotional means of that particular product so whenever we are buying a one brand product along with the brand a gift or a free sachet will be of some other new launch products sachet will be getting that is what is known as sampling or in some ways what they will be doing before uh, if a customer wants to test the product free samples will be given for the customer that is what is sampling second one coupons coupons are supplied along with the product so it is normally a certificate that reduces the prices maybe uh, if you buy some products a coupon will be received as uh, 500 rupees off or something like that that is what is coupon gift coupon we call that is next one is demonstration so it is the instruction to educate the consumers in the manner of using the product so how to use the product so they'll be demonstrating the product they'll be providing the customer or the uh, customer with the proper information or instruction related to the product that is what is demonstration next one contest contest will be conducted normally to attract new new customers and to introduce new products then money refund offers if a purchaser uh, if the purchaser or the buyer of the product is not satisfied with the product which he bought then the part or all the purchases money will be refunded to him that is one way of sustaining the customer with the company the next one premium offers temporarily reducing the price of the offer or giving 25 percent extra or 50 percent free or so on reduction in price of the product that is what is premium offers then price of offers it is a temporary uh, discount given to the customers seasonal time they'll be giving temporary discounts diwali sale or christmas sale or some seasonal sales so these are all the price of offers then consumer sweepstakes so they'll be submitting the names for inclusion the price contest so like lottery ticket so uh, they'll be having some rules and regulations based on that when a consumer buys a product a customer buys a product from that uh, retail shop or something like that they'll be uh, including uh, some lottery ticket or some uh, ticket basis so the chosen customer will be announced as the winner of that particular uh, contest that is what is consumer sweep takes then buyback allowance so normally given for a previous trade deal okay and this trade deal offers a certain amount of money for new purchased uh, purchases based on the purchased quantity so based on the quantity of the product purchases they will be getting the allowance known as buyback allowance and free trials so it consists of inviting prospective purchases try the product without cost in the hope that they will buy the product so uh, some uh, when we look into some food items we can taste the food item then we can buy the product this is what is free trials the next one dealer sales promotion normally we provided for the re uh, dealers so first one is a buying allowance it is an offer or money uh, or temporary uh, a reduction into dealers in purchasing for a stipulated pre period of time if you are purchasing within this period of time 
you will be getting some discount or offer that is what is buying allowance next one is merchandise allowance means it's for ad normally an advertising allowance is given for the dealers for advertising the features of the manufacturers so the dealer gets from the manufacturing company some products so the dealer in his retail shop he'll be selling the product for for advertising the manufacturing pro pro product some allowance will be given by, by the manufacturer company to the dealer that is what is known as merchandise allowance the next one is price deals apart from this regular discount special discounts are also allowed to the dealers for the if if we buy uh, products in huge quantity then some price deals or some special discounts will be given for the dealers then push money or premium so manufacturers will be may offer push money so uh, normally payment in cash or gift given to the dealers or to the sales for so whenever the dealers are uh, normally selling the manufacturer products in more number for a particular year or so on special gifts or cash will be given for that dealer that is what is push money or premium the next one is cooperative advertising we learned before the manufacturer along with the retailer or wholesaler or the dealer they'll be advertising together the manufacturer's product that is what is cooperative advertising then dealer sales contest indirect way of boosting the sales of the company so sales contest will be conducted at the level of a retailer or wholesaler level so automatically when the retailer or wholesaler uh, sells more of the manufacturer's products the manufacturer will also be benefited so they'll uh, in an indirect way of boosting the sales of the dealer next one dealers listed promotion this a listing dealer is an advertisement so it gives a list of dealers or retailers who stock the product or who are engaged in this promotion so they will be the uh, dealers included in the list will also engage in the promotional activities then dealers gift manufacturers will be given pro uh, sorry uh, good gifts for the dealers uh, so normally uh, the articles include a television set or something based on the sales volume normally the dealers will be given gifts then point of purchase it plays the role of silent salesman so this point of purchase is a dealer aid and dealer displays or dealer hopes so uh, from the point the purchase point that is what is a it plays a it acts as a silent salesman so displays for dealers you have seen in some shop uh, retail shops so along with the retailer shop's name you will be seeing some ad of some products this is what is known as point of purchase the next one salesforce promotion bonus to salesforce so uh, the salesperson who is uh, promoting the products and selling the more products they will be given some bonus then sales for contest contest will be conducted for the sales people and the winners will be announced based on that then conferences salesman will be uh, educated and inspired and rewarded so they'll be encouraged to attend the meetings and conferences and uh, discussions will be done along with the salesman so it is just a motivating factor for the salesman this is uh, related to sales first promotion so these are the different promotional act kinds of promotional activities consumer sales promotion dealer sales promotion and sales force promotion then steps in planning sales promotion so first step for planning sales promotion is to assess and analyze the present situation of the brand so first the brand should be properly assessed and analyzed so uh, in the market what is the uh, market share of the particular brand who are the major competitors so brand performance of the brands so how it is performing so normally uh, no, how it is performing for the brand users or non users and lapsed users so the brand performance how it is performing in the market so these all should be assessed and analyzed then second step they have to identify the alternative schemes and the selection of the most appropriate sales promotion scheme so first if the if there is some lag behind when they are analyzing or assessing the present situation of the brand they have to then they have to choose they, uh, they have to choose some alternative uh, scenario so for that they have to identify uh, some alternative ways so selection of the most appropriate sales promotion schemes 
capable of the, that will be capable of accomplishing the goals set within the available budget so that is the second first they have to assess and analyze the present situation of the brand in the market then if it is proper they can go on with the same promotional schemes or so on if it doesn't work out or if it is lagging behind then they can go for some alternative scheme promotional schemes then the third step relates to incorporating creativity in the scheme to be offered they have to create some uh, they have to uh, incorporate some creative ideas in the scheme to normally to be offered to the uh, customers the fourth term uh, sorry step relates to legal validity of the sales promotion scheme that is to be considered the va legal validity of the uh, scheme which they are providing or offering to the customers so uh, legal validity plays a major role the next one is the fifth step it covers the primary de decisions or the important decisions related to the timing and the duration of the schemes to be offered location by selection of dealers and the conviction of the trade and sales force about the appropriateness of the scheme so primary uh, decision should be taken and related to the timing of the scheme duration of the uh, scheme to be offered location wise the dealer should be uh, selected and convince convey they have to convict the trade and sales force also so the next step is covers the development of the evaluation criteria in relation to the sales promotion goal set so uh, they have to uh, they have to develop the evaluation criteria so they'll be setting a promotional goal right so that that has to be uh, evaluated properly and there should be a, a development in the evaluation process also seventh step relates to the monitoring the offer and collecting the relevant data and experience for further use as well as mid period correction so it should relate to normally they have to monitor the offer and they have to collect the relevant data and experience so which will be used for the future that is the next step eighth step relates to the evaluating the effectiveness of sales promotion in the context of their goals they'll be setting the goals so the sales promotion techniques or the schemes which they have implemented is it effective or not that should be checked based on, on the uh, goals of the particular organization so the first step is assess and analyze the present situation of the brand second one is to identify the alternative schemes based on the goals third one is to relate the incorporating creativity so uh, so they have to incorporate the creative creativity into the scheme so they have to relate the sales promotion scheme to the legal validity they have to cover the primary decisions related to the time and duration of the scheme etc next is to develop development of the evaluation criteria then uh, monitoring the offer and collecting the relevant data and experience for further use then last step is to evaluate the effectiveness of the sales promotion then competitive commission of india it's a na chief national competitive regulator in india so it is a statutory body within the ministry of corporate affairs it is mainly responsible for uh, enforcing the competition act 2002 in order to promote the competition and prevent activities that have an appreciable adverse effect on competition in india so the schemes when they are conducting some contest or competition so uh, for promoting the competition and to prevent the activities which uh, leads to some adverse effects the competition for that there is a regulatory body which is a statutory body called the competitive commission of india which is constituted within the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. The next one is personal selling. Personal selling, it's another important uh, element of retail promotion mix. It is in the one-to-one uh, -one communication, I said you before. So normally face-to-face -face interaction between the salesperson and the buyer. So by effective sales staff normally is a central part of the uh, personal selling theory he can make a sizable difference in closing a sale and uh, reflecting the image of the store normally uh, close and uh, the effectiveness of the sales representative or the salesman uh, uh, that is the main thing behind closing a sale or uh, conducting a sales processor so 
uh, he the salesperson should have good communication skill he should induce the buyer to buy the product so these all the things mainly required for an effective salesperson so i said you in the previous classes itself effective sales means not selling the product but the benefits of the product and the experience of the product so the main objectives of the personal selling is to persuade the customer to make purchases to stimulate the sales of impulse items or products related to customers basic purchases to uh, complete the transaction with customers to get feedback for companies decision makers to provide adequate levels of customer service to improve and maintain customer satisfaction to create awareness of materials uh, which are marketed through web or through internet so these are the main objectives of personal selling so this is the selling process so first the customer should be approached then he should be greeted then the needs of the customer should be found out then based on the needs of the customer the product should be presented and demonstrated then uh, the queries of the customer should be answered properly uh, once we convince the customers he will purchase the product so that we can close the sales then after the sales we can follow up or we can get the feedback from the customers so this is a good selling process in case of personal selling first approaching the customer greeting the customer finding out the needs of the customer presenting and demonstrating about the product based on the needs of the customer answering the queries of the customer closing the sales of the customer follow up and suggestions after the sales so next one functions of the sales manager first function is the selecting the right sales force then training the sales force motivating the sales force and controlling the sales force first selection of the sales force second one training of the sales force third motivating the sales force fourth one controlling the sales force next one recruitment and selection of sales force since selection process there are some steps first the job should be properly analyzed then application blank that means the application of the job should be properly filled then sources of the recruitment should be found out internal and external sources then personal interview then he have to undergo some psychological test then reference has to be checked then go on for medical examination and at last the final selection then training of sales personnel so once the uh, sales person is selected then he has to undergo training so some factors to be considered for a good salesman is he he makes a more enthusiastic presentation so the good sales personnel or a sales representative or a salesman should have a good presentation skill second one he has to he has he should have the ability to clinch the order third one he should have great product knowledge he should be aware of the product what are the features of the product what is the cost of the product what so all these things should be known he should have adequate knowledge related to the product which he is selling then he should pay, pay closer attention to ensure that services are rendered to the customer so after sales services also should be properly provided to the customer so he he has a superior territory organization he answers objections better he can obtain more customer interviews he keeps abreast of competition and competitor activities so a good sales person when he uh, a good trained sales person should act in such a way that he should present properly enthusiastically related to the product he should have the ability to clinch on to the order he should have a good knowledge about the product he should uh, pay good attention related to the services offered to the customer he should have the ability to answer the queries of the customer properly he should have the ability to obtain more customer interviews he, he should keep off the competition or the competitors activities he should somehow have the ability to negotiate uh, main thing behind the soft the skill which a good sales person should have is a better communication skill. skill that is mainly the persuasive communication we call that convincing the customer in such a way that uh, he should somehow close the sale of the product 
so the main objective of the training are to give the following types of information to the main objectives is, is to give information related to the knowledge about the company about the company products about the customers sales procedures the uh, he should be properly provided with the training that is mainly art of selling or the salesmanship so uh, the sales good uh, sales person should have proper knowledge about the company that is and the startup uh, the <laughs> when the company was found what is the history behind the company the, what is the organizational structure what is the mission vision of the company all these things what are the product lines what are the product uh, products available in that particular company what are the main product futures all these things may who are the main competitors all these things he should know then who he should have good knowledge about the customers so types of customers so the behavior of the customers will be different so based on that he should have the ability to convince and he should have the po positive attitude and he should be patient enough to convince the customer next one he should have um, knowledge about the sales and other procedures which are prescribed that is how to get orders what forms should be filled up and the sales report required all this knowledge he should have then he should be trained that is uh, trained for salesmanship that is he should be trained for the art of selling so the uh, types of training methods three methods that is telling method showing method and discussion method in telling method normally lectures will be taken related to all the aspects to be trained to the sales personnel then showing method means the products or the services should be properly demonstrated and it should be showed to the uh, sales person next one is discussion method means uh, the permission should be uh, will be given to the trainee for asking for doubts or clarifications so he can clarify any doubts which is in his mind so that is what is the discussion method these are the types first one telling method second one showing method third one is the discussion method so next one is motivation motivating the sales personnel that is both financially and non-financial methods of motivation so uh, some of the methods are uh, used for remunerating or compensating the sales force are straight salary commission on sales salary and commission on sales salary plus commission on sales above the certain amount salary plus commission on varying totals or different types of goods salary plus a shares in the profit so these are some of the methods normally when we uh, see most of the companies uh, best uh, uh, sales uh, sales person award so uh, uh, some incentive special privileges will also be provided to the sales person for in such a way for mainly for motivating the sales personnel then controlling the sales sales personnel per, through personal contact or through some correspondence or salesman's report they can be properly controlled so next uh, this is uh, the first piece over that is promotion uh, is over next one is the distribution or the next p of marketing play uh, mix that is the place so distribution normally is the delivery point or the destination point where the product or service is to be distributed that is the main the place where it should be delivered that is what is known as uh, distribution or the place or the fourth p of marketing mix so distribution refers to the act of marketing and carrying products to custom consumers it is also used to describe the extent of market coverage for a given product so it's normally the act of marketing and carrying normally uh, from the uh, retailer shop or from the place of purchase it will be properly de uh, delivered to the place a customer's place or the consumer's place that is what is distribution through some transportation or logistics they'll be distributed so it is also used to describe the extent of market coverage for a given product so distribution management it's defined as a combination of all the activities which facilitates the movement and coordination of supply and demand in creation of time place and possession utility in goods so uh, combination of all the activities which is normally facilitating the movement of movement and coordination of supply and demand that is what is distribution management so distribution is the mark act of marketing and carrying the products to the customers or the consumers that is what is distribution 
so combining all the activities of distribution is known as distribution management so normally a good distribution system has the following functions that is it helps in tracking the growth and decline in demand of the companies products or service so it will be monitoring and the growth of the product and the decline of the product in mainly in the demand creation so whether the demand of the product is growing or declining that will be properly tracked and monitored so it enables to design and implement a joint marketing strategy with the distributor and retailers like customizing sales arguments pricing and discount structures based on the local situation and condition so they'll be uh, so they'll be designing and implementing a joint marketing strategy mainly with the distributor and the retailer so they'll be having a joint marketing strategy the firm can give marketing support product sales training after sales support with the help of good distribution network so if the distribution network is good the firm can give all the marketing support uh, then training for product sales related training then after sales support all will be given by the company or the firm so the main objectives of a distribution system or distribution is getting the right goods at the right place at the right time so getting the right goods to the right person at the right place at the right time mainly at the least possible cost that is what is the main objective of distribution so to fully make use of the available human and material resources to the maximum possible extent without wastage so utilizing all the resources properly to the maximum without any wastage without wasting any resources so optimizing optimum utilization of the resources available that is the second objective then third one to enhance the rapid growth and development of country and organization so the uh, development of the country and the organization should uh, for enhancing the growth of the uh, country's development and organization's development so uh, the role of distribution channels so when there is no channel of distribution just imagine through an example so just imagine there is no channel of distribution so when a customer wants to buy a soap or some other products when there is no channel of distribution so thereby the product has to be delivered to the end customer directly by the producer so uh, there is no intermediaries in between just a manufacturing company and the customer just imagine there is no channel of distribution at all in that case the manufacturing company should deliver the product directly to the customer that is the main thing so when there is a channel of uh, a distribution involving a retailer so when the manufacturer company i think you might have heard of supply chain uh, the product or service from the starting point uh, when, uh, a supply chain includes from the starting point till it reach the product reaches the final consumer so the chain all the chain together constitutes the supply chain so in that part of the supply chain is what is a distribution channel we okay so when when there is no channel at all the manufacturing company who is manufacturing the product has to sell the product to the customer and it, and that company should deliver the product directly to the customer but when there is a channel of distribution like retailer or wholesaler or some intermediaries in uh, between in that case he, even when a retailer only is involved the process becomes simplified not only for the customer but also for the producers so in that case the product can made available to a large number of customers with less effort on the producer side so a producer means manufacturer side so there is less effort to be involved so uh, yeah, now more pro uh, so if there is no channel of distribution the manufacturing company can only deliver uh, the product to some localities nearby it cannot uh, extend the uh, market okay that is the main drawback when there is no channel but when there is a channel of distribution uh, when there is a wholesaler involved or a retailer involved or transportation service providers are involved something like that so the products can reach a huge amount of customers so there are different distribution channels first one is direct channel and the is another one is indirect channel so direct channel mean, means when the producer or the manufacturing company sells the product directly to the 
uh, consumer or the customer without any middleman, without any intermediaries. So that is what is known as the direct channel or the zero level channels. So selling through post service, internet or door to door selling, these are all the examples of uh, direct channel. So first one door to door selling, then internet selling, third one is mail order selling. Then company owned retail outlets, telemarketing. So, for, sorry. so door to door selling, you know, right? So sell, coming to a ho home, they are, uh, that is what is personal, uh, one of an ex, one of the example of personal selling. Come and, and directly to a home, they'll be coming, they'll be delivering the product. They'll be selling the product. If you buy the product, they'll be giving the product in hand. That's internet selling through internet, they'll be selling the products directly to the companies will be selling the product directly to the customers. Mail order uh, order product means when uh, products are normally uh, sold through mails. When an order is placed in the mail, we'll be uh, getting the product. So then company owned retail shops means company itself will be having their own retail shops where they sell the products. Then telemarketing through call centers or uh, the through call centers they'll be selling their product the next one is two level channel that is uh, involving some two intermediaries in between so like manufacturer wholesaler retailer customer so here wholesaler uh, retailer they'll be acting as a intermediary or, or a link between the manufacturer and the customer so normally uh, when we look in today's uh, india most of the businesses are retail businesses when we look into. So normally uh, the manufacturing companies are selling their products through the retailers to the customers. That is the main thing prevailing today in our country. So here uh, commonly used channel for distributing goods like soap, rice, wheat, clothes, etc. is through a wholesaler and a retailer. That is through two-level channel. Then three-level channel means manufacturer, agent, wholesaler, retailer, customer. So the, uh, the another one intermediary or a middleman will be there in between. That is the agent. So uh, three first two-level means there will be a manufacturer. Direct level means manufacturer, customer. Two-level means manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer, customer. Three level means manufacturer, agent, wholesaler, retailer, and customer. So the manufacturers will be supplying the goods to their agents who will be supplying them to the wholesalers and retailers. The wholesalers or retailers will again sell the product to the customers. So this is usually happens when the manufacturer, farmer growing dry fruits, saffron, etc. The deals, they deal in limited products and yet want to cover a wide market. So they'll be marketing their products through an agent that will be passing through an exchange that is wholesaler, then retailer, it will be reaching the consumer. The next one is indirect channel. When a manufacturer or a producer uses the services of one or more middlemen to distribute goods, it is known as indirect channel this is a most commonly used channel as businesses expand it is not feasible for companies to reach all markets directly the different levels of indirect channels or one level channel so in indirect channel in direct channel there will be no intermediary or middleman at all manufacturer and customer in indirect channel there will be a mediator or a middleman okay there will be a middleman so they'll be common using that middleman to distribute their goods. So company cannot deal with every customers at a time. So they'll be having some uh, retailers or uh, some middleman like wholesalers or someone to distribute the products to the customers. So one level channel means manufacturer, retailer, consumer. This is mainly uh, retail business is flourishing in our country. So uh, this channel, includes only one middleman that is a retailer so manufacturer retailers uh, will be buying products from the manufacturing companies and they'll be selling their products they'll be buying in bulk and selling in small small quantities to the ultimate customers this is normally used for specialty goods so different types of intermediaries or middlemen like uh, agents or brokers we call them so um, these intermediaries normally sells uh, products and services for some commission or percentage basis. They'll be legally appointed to impart information about the product to the 
customers on behalf of the manufacturing companies but they never take the ownership of the product sold they'll be just acting as an agent for the company the key function of this intermediary is, is to buy uh, sorry to bring the uh, buyer and the seller together that is the main deal so they act as an agent they bring together the manufacturing company and the by, uh, buyer of the product so for example insurance or real estate agents they'll be getting commissions so insurance companies like life insurance corporation or other private insurance companies they'll be appointing some insurance agents uh, that agents act as a uh, mediator between the company and the customers then wholesalers or resellers normally wholesalers no, um, buy in bulk and uh, resell them to the retailers in bulk quantity only so they are so so they are mainly the wholesalers so they provide services like order processing storage delivery and they participate in promotional activities also they are independent businessmen so when they purchase in bulk quantity from the manufacturer the products they take the ownership of the products so they pay for the products get the products so they automatically become the owner of the products then they'll be selling the products to the retailer in bulk quantity so they'll be providing services like uh, they'll be processing the order they'll be storing the uh, products and they'll be delivering the products to the retailer they'll be participating in the promotional activities also the next one is the distributors so distributors are normally selected by the manufacturers to distribute the products to the wholesalers and retail uh, uh, wholesalers or retailers so normally distributors are involved in many businesses and cover ma many geographical area the few service distributors offered to the wholesalers are delivery maintenance of inter inventory extension of credit these are all the dist uh, distributors normally they'll be delivering the product they'll be maintaining the inventory they at least may, they'll maintain the stock they'll be ex, uh, extending the credit facility all these things will be done by the distributor next one a uh, retailer a uh, retailer why they play a major role in the distribution channel is a retailer they act as a mediator between the wholesaler and the customer so they have a direct link with the customer that is the main thing so uh retail business people they have a direct link with the customer they will know the taste and preferences of the com customer more when compared to the other uh ch channel so that means uh, the manuf other the producer or the manufacturer or the wholesaler so si since retailers uh, have direct link with the customer they'll be knowing the uh, complete feedback relate uh, about the customer the taste and preferences and other things related to the customer so they will be purchasing different goods from the wholesaler and selling them to the ultimate customers in small small quantities from one place they will be having some uh, shops they will be having some retail shops they will be buying goods from different wholesalers different kinds of goods different different products in bulk they will be selling in small small quantities from in a from a one location from one place so we also know many retail online uh, sites also right they are doing retail business through internet so again in deep related to wholesale uh, wholesale is a channel of distribution where large quantities of goods are sold to the retailer or to industrial commercial or to professional businesses which are not the not which are not the end consumer so they'll be selling to La selling large quantities of goods to retailers or other business people mainly for doing business so the uh, two key phrases in definition is large quantities of goods and they'll be mainly they'll be buying in bulk and they'll be selling in bulk that is the main thing in wholesale they'll be selling to the business people again for do uh, business instead of consumers they'll not have direct link with the co consumers they'll be selling the products in bulk to the retailers or other business people so it's a distribution process of wholesaler getting large quantities of goods and sell selling them to the retailers or other professional business the distribution process is known as wholesaling so the wholesale uh, or the distribution process is known as wholesaling in simpler words this is another term for wholesaling so who is a wholesaler wholesaler can be a company 
or a person that buys products in bulk from the manufacturer and sells them to the retailer. That person is known as or that company is known as a wholesaler. So normally he's the middleman between the manufacturer and the retailer. So a wholesaler is a person or a business who sells large quantities of goods to retailers or other profession. Same thing is repeated. Okay, so example is uh, world's largest B2B marketplace, Alibaba. So this is one of the example of wholesaler. So importance of wholesaler. So they'll be breaking down the bulk. So they'll be buying in big quantities and they'll be again breaking the bulk into small, small bulks. That bulk quantity will be so uh, sold to different retailers then they'll be providing in storage facility so uh, they'll be moving the burden of uh, storing away from the manufacturers so manufacturers products uh, wholesalers will be purchasing they automatically wholesalers will become the owner of the products they'll be having own godowns or storage facilities where the products is sold so they'll be providing them so automatically uh, the store burden of storing away from the manufacturers shifted towards the wholesaler then the risk bearing so wholesaler bear, bear, bears the risk of loss so there will be fluctuating demand the goods will be damaged due to storage on transit so the wholesaler will take full responsibility of the risk then demand supply stability they will be maintaining a good demand supply stability so they'll be always having some stock of the product with them they will be uh, making use of the product to maintain their demand supply stability with the retailer and the end consumer so uh, when they are having good storage facility when they are pro uh, storing the products in uh, reasonable amounts when there is uh, uh, demand is created when the supply becomes low aut automatically they'll help in that aspect then functions assembling storing distribution transportation financing risk bearing these are all the functions of wholesalers they'll be assembling they'll be buying the products from different manufacturers and they'll be keeping the products in a one place that is they'll be assembling the products in one place then they'll be storing the products so uh, production and consumption takes a large time gap right so in between to maintain a good demand and supply sustain stability they'll be storing the goods then distribution they'll be distributing the stored goods assembled and stored goods to large number of retailers who are operating in different different places then they'll be providing with the transportation facility also from the warehouse to the retail shops they'll be providing the goods will be transported through the transport facility available by the wholesalers then they'll be uh, supporting with financial credit basis so they, uh, they uh, since for maintaining a good relationship with the retailer they will be uh, providing credit facilities to the re retailer then as i said already they will be bearing the risk of any goods damage goods or uh, theft or something like that then types of wholesaler first one is merchant wholesaler specialty wholesaler internet wholesaler full service wholesaler limited service wholesaler discount wholesaler dropship wholesaler so these are the different types of wholesalers first one merchant wholesalers this is the most common type of wholesaler who buys all sort of different and profitable items from different manufacturers store them and sell them to the retailers so they are the uh, merchant retailers they normally uh, sell fast moving consumer goods so, so they'll be having uh, they don't have much specialized knowledge about the products and usually operate in fast moving consumer goods industry so they'll be fast moving consumer goods they'll be purchasing from different manufacturing companies they'll be storing then they'll be selling that to the retailers the next one specialty wholesalers they'll be uh, specialty wholesaler stock items belonging to a specific industry or product category they'll be concentrating on only particular uh, industry or the specific industry or a particular specific product category only so they'll be having good knowledge about the product then internet wholesalers they'll be operating and conducting transactions everything through the uh, internet that is internet wholesalers next one full service wholesalers 
usually they are found in consumer durables or engineering product industries so they'll be uh, providing full service including stocking inventories operating warehouses order picking delivering training sales associates so normally training the sales representatives or the associates of their either then supp uh, supplying credits promotions to the end retailer so this the they come up on full service wholesalers they'll be hand handling a large uh, sales volume and deals with a narrow line of products so they'll be concentrating on all the activities so that uh, that's why they are known as full service wholesalers then limited service wholesalers so these wholesalers offer fewer service to their customers like only stocking only delivering etc so they'll be they have limited the service to a particular thing only so uh, so in full service they'll be concentrating on every aspects in limited service they'll be concentrating on only a fewer service they'll be limiting their service so so there are many types of limited service wholesalers like cash and carry wholesaler truck wholesalers so in cash and carry wholesalers they'll be handling on uh, their uh, who handle limited line of fast moving goods so they'll be ha handling on only fast moving goods they'll be selling to the small retailers but they'll not be delivering the goods the retailer will be coming they'll be taking their goods for themselves then truck wholesalers who sells and deliver the goods directly to from their vehicles so they'll be uh, providing with transport facility that is what is truck wholesalers then discount wholesalers they deal with uh, deal mainly in discounted stock usually the stock is discounted either because the products are discounted refurbished or returned or going to expire soon so th this type of wholesalers will be concentrating mainly on the discounted stock so they'll be purchasing the discounted stock and they'll be selling then dropship wholesalers they'll be facilitating the in the process of drop shipping they'll be delivering the goods directly to the end consumer when the retailer makes a sale so what will happen means the retailer uh, will be getting the order of sale the retailer will be informing the wholesaler the wholesaler will directly deliver the uh, product to the consumers this is what is dropship wholesalers so next one is retail so it is a sale of goods or service from the business to the consumer for their own use so normally uh, they'll be buying in large quantity from the manufacturer or the wholesaler and they'll be selling in smaller smaller amounts to the final consumer or the customer there is a main role they play so uh, they'll be uh, selling a goods from a business to the consumer so the retail transaction handles small quantities of goods whereas wholesale deals with the purchasing of goods on a large scale so retailing will be normally handling with small quantities of goods so retail transaction are not to be confused with the online transaction so retail transaction means goods, goods must be sold from a single point directly to the consumer for their end use so we know supermarkets best example for retail uh, business so whenever we go we can buy the product in small quantity we'll pay the amount there we'll get the product come back to our home that is what is mainly the retailers they'll be buying from the suppliers mainly the wholesalers or the manufacturing companies they'll be ordering in bulk they'll be having that in their shop we'll be going we'll we'll be buy the products in small quantity we'll come pay and come back there so normally this retail is the final channel of distribution so here two phrases should be concentrated small quantities of goods they'll be selling directly to the consumer so retailer is a person or business who sells small quantities of goods to the consumer for their ultimate or the actual use so normally retailers the main categories of products that retailers sells include food hard or durable goods uh, soft goods art goods etc so modern uh, retailers normally they'll be making decisions strategic decisions based on the type of show store the market served optimal product assortment customer service market positioning so based on this they they'll be take uh, deciding they'll be taking strategic decisions so uh, based on the store which they operate type of store then based on the market which they serve optimum what are what are the major optimal product assortment based on that what type of customer service they are providing what 
what market positioning they are in based on all these things they'll be taking strategic decisions so there are different types of retailer small scale retailer so small scale re uh, retailers include unit store retailers street traders market traders hawkers and peddlers cheap jacks so they are the small trade retail small scale retailers so you when when we look into the unit stores they are the general stores or single line stores like cloth shop gift shop grocery shop so these all comes under unit stores street traders means they'll be selling products on street foot footpath of the street so they are the street traders and they mainly they'll be selling products in bus stands railway stations etc they'll be selling mobile accessories fancy accessories these all things in the bus stands railway stations then market traders they'll be uh, these open for selling on specific days and more on wherever there is an event so market traders whenever there is some exhibition or some event or fest or something like that there they'll be opening a shop there they'll be selling items that is what is market traders so next one is hawkers and peddlers these retailers normally uh, sell goods door to door in their cart or bicycle they'll be coming in a small cart or a bicycle to door to door they'll be uh, carrying items that are in demand and as uh, based on seas mainly seasonal change during seasons they'll be uh, selling their products they'll be coming to the to our doors in their bicycle or some uh, cart which they pull uh, hawkers they'll be selling woolen clothes in winter so winter time they'll be selling you, uh, you might have seen many people seasonal times they'll be coming door to door in a small uh, cart which is pushed by them or on a bicycle they'll be selling goods the next one is ch cheap jacks these retailers have a specific place in the locality but do change location for business so they'll be having a particular place for business doing their in the particular locality they'll be selling goods but if they want if they need they'll be changed and they'll be changing the location for doing the business example uh, selling unbranded items like clothes plastic vehicles kitchen utensils etc the next one is large scale retailers departmental stores discount store chain stores mail order houses supermarkets super stores convenience stores consumer cooperatives these all are large scale retailers retail shops first one is departmental store they have a wide variety of products being sold under one roof so they'll be having different different types of products everything so sold under one particular shop that is departmental store discount store standardized items are sold at lower prices that is what is discount store then chain stores stores near residential areas selling the same kind of products in different localities now example they and they can be in the entire region state or nation example nike stores dell raymond big bus are these are the examples of chain stores then mail order houses through this normally the seller shares information about the product via different means like advertising press post catalog telecalling etc so the buyer need not visit the seller but he can order the product and they can receive the product through mail or post sorry through courier or some through they can deliver it through some delivery agencies then supermarket it is a large retail store they will be selling a variety of consumer goods with self service so we are aware of supermarket so they normally sell uh, daily needs like cold cream bakery vegetables meat groceries fruits etc super stores they are oversized departmental stores and they are also known as hypermarkets so they carry wide range of general merchandise and fast moving consumer goods so saloons restaurants everything will be operating in a single uh roof that is what is a hypermarket example lulu mall then convenience stores there are uh, small stores that deal with in limited line of high selling goods at higher price so they are and they are like mini supermarkets so they are located at the corner and have fast food franchise and food fast food items also they are the convenience stores. so they are the small stores so they'll be having only limited line of as uh, a line of high selling goods the price will be somewhat higher then consumer cooperatives association of consumers they themselves will be buying a buying products and they'll be selling uh, for non members okay consumers they'll be joining together they'll be having an association and from that association they'll be investing 
amount they'll be buying products then they'll be selling to nearby localities that is what is con consumer then types of retailing store re retailing non-store retailing corporate retailing internet retailing service retailing so first one store retailing so normally it includes different types of retail stores so we learn right like departmental stores specialty stores supermarkets they are these are the store retail and they'll be having some stores or uh, some infrastructure uh, that is what is store retail non-store retailing means where a transaction happens outside conventional shops or stores so two types of uh, non-store retailing is there <clears throat> direct selling and autom automated vending uh, machines through automated vending and uh, direct selling means where the company uses direct methods like door to door selling automated vending means some automated vending machines will be installed and, uh, and they'll uh, through that machine variety of products are sold based on their need the, there is there is no retailer or anyone required based on the needs the customer can go uh, purchase for some price through the vending machines then corporate retailing means retailing through corporate channels like chain stores franchising merchandising conglomerates so they'll be focusing on retailing goods of only one parent or pa partner brand that is corporate retailing the big, big corporate companies will be having different showrooms so that is what is corporate retailing next one internet retailing through online means they'll be selling their products that is what is internet retailing next one is service retailing means so the uh, retailers not always sell tangible goods they offer also con services also like restaurants uh, hotels so they are all the examples of service retailing then importance of retailing so normally retailing is important for creditors customers as well as the economy of the country retailer stores are the place where most of the actual sales of the customer takes place so mainly sales takes place where when we look into not the manufacturing uh, company or somewhere uh, other mainly the actual sales takes place in the retail store only so they act as both as a ma marketing tools for the brands and a supporting tool for the customers to exchange and communicate important information so retailing plays a major ro uh, role it's a great asset to the economy it provides jobs it adds to the gdp and acts as a preferred shopping channel during the hol holiday season also so functions of retailers buying and assembling of goods warehousing and storing the goods selling for final consumption promoting the brands credit facilities to the consumers they bear the risk they grade the product and pack the product they they act as a source of market information they give education to the customers related to the products they cater to the needs of all kinds of customers so these are all the um, functions of retailers so first they buy they assemble the products second one they warehouse and store the products sell for final consumption they promote the product they provide credit facility to the customers they bear all the risks they grade the product and pack the product they act as a source of market information they provide education to the customers and they cater to the needs of all kinds of customers then what are the factors determining the choice of channel of distribution okay so a rational decision regarding choice of channel channels of distribution should ensure maximum geographical coverage of the market maximum promotional efforts and minimum cost so these all to be considered while choosing the channel of distribution so it should cover the maximum geographical area it should maximize the promotional efforts and it should minimize the cost so choice of distribution channel depends on the variety of factors so these can be normally product related company related market related or customer related factors so four uh, variety of factors like product related factors company related factors market related factors and competitor related uh, related factors so based on all these factors the distribution channel choice of distribution channel depends on this 
based on these factors. First one, product related factors related to the uh, relates to the nature of the product, whether the product is perishable or not, the value of the product and product complexity. So based on the nature of the product, consumer goods like television, refrigerators, so they and that can they can these type of consumer products can be distributed through long channels as they are less expensive, not technical, and frequently normally they are purchased. So based on the nature of the product the channel of distribution should be selected. Then based on the perishable nature of the product, it should be selected. So norm, perishable products like fruits, vegetables, meat, etc., these are circulated through short channels, while other products can require long channels of distribution. So based on the value of the products. So value low value products, long channels are normally preferred. So, when it comes to high value products, only short channels are preferred. Then product complexity, short channels are normally preferred for technically complex goods like industrial goods or engineering products, machineries, generators. So they need short channels while non-complex or simpler ones can be distributed through long ch channels. So based on the uh, product, the nature of the product, value of the product, perishable nature of the product, product complexity, the distribution channel to be selected. Then company characteristics. So financial strength of the company. The companies having huge funds can go for direct distribution. Those without such funds have to go for indirect channel only. So uh, based on control, short channels are used if the management wants greater control on the channel members. Otherwise, if they don't want to uh, want the control on the channel members, they can go for longer channels. The next one, competitive factors, normally policies and channels are selected based on, selected by the competitors also affect the choice of the channels. So an enterprise or a company should decide whether to adopt the same channel as that of the competitor or they have to select a different one or a different channel. For example, if Nokia has uh, selected a particular channel uh, for sales of their handsets, other competitive uh, companies can select some comparable channels. So based on the competitive factors, the channels chosen by the competitors, that affects the choice of the distribution channels. Then market factor, size of the market, geographical concentration, these all affects the choice of marketing channel. First one, uh, size of the market, if the number of the customers is small, uh, then they can go for short, uh, sorry, uh, short, uh, long channels. If the size of the customers is high, they can go for long channels. Then geographical concentration, Long channels are normally used if the customers are widely spread. So in a sing if the customers are located in a wide area, they can go for long channels. And if they are located in a small place, short channels are preferable. So based on the quantity purchase, uh, if more quantity is purchased, long uh, short channels are used and they can use direct channel also. So in case of uh, the size of the quantity is small, then they can prefer long channels of distribution. So uh, from distribution strategies, I'll be uh, uh, taking in the next session, okay. So till this, uh, till the factors determining choice of uh, channels of dis distribution, if you have any doubts, you can ask me. So you all don't have any doubts? No, no. Okay.
<coughs> hello ma'am hello ah yeah tell me uh, actually i'm from uh, kolkata region kolkata region and tiruvanthapuram region are same right now yeah, yeah, yeah. same oh okay okay so if you need the ppts uh, you can uh, send your mail id to my whatsapp number so that i'll send you the ppts okay if you are in need, okay ma'am okay uh, you can uh, send uh, your mail ids to my whatsapp number so that i'll send you the ppts ma'am how can how can i get your whatsapp number i think uh, it's provided to you by the regional center mail um okay or you can ask me through mail also jasminbino at gmail dot com okay ma'am okay regarding attendance link it's not necessary the regional center will be recording your attendance so it's not necessary for my session Ma'am, one question. Sorry, one question from this side. Ma'am, yeah. how uh, how to complete the assignment? I don't have any idea, so I'm just asking you how to complete the assignment and how we have to submit that. I think you have to. Uh, you can refer everything in the website. Every details are provided in the website provider. Um, website of your regional center. everything's every details so, uh, related to your exams related to your as assignments everything are provided in the website you can clarify everything through through that website itself ma'am but if there is any doubt then how will we Hi, ma'am. Is that possible to submit the assignments through online? From where did you get the assignment question? 